It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host. And as I always say, this is a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. We talk about the church and all that God is doing in his glorious kingdom. This is show number 1099 today. And uh, we've just uh, finished up Thanksgiving. We're looking toward the Christmas season. And it's always a a happy time to be able to uh, think about these things. I do have a few rules. We don't talk sports, politics, or doctrine on the show, but we always speak well of one another, and that seems to have worked out very, very well. And uh, and I've got people who come to be on the show on a fairly regular basis, and uh, I just appreciate these folks. I have uh, Brother Glenn Burns back in the studio with me, and uh, literally, Brother Glenn, you've been with me uh, doing this show almost from the very beginning because you called in way back in – that would have been 2002. Mm. And were you, were you at the Haven Rest at that time, right? Right, that's okay. right. And you called in and... Uh, Trying to get turkeys. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were <laughs> doing that. And then you and then you shared about the, your vision for the group home yeah. uh, for, the, for the women. Yeah. And uh, all that happened. We yeah. talked about all that over the years. And, of course, I wrote, wrote about you in my book. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I've, I've kind of watched your ministry as you've gone from... Uh, well, you were in, uh, North Florida Baptist Church mm-hmm. on staff there, and yeah. then, then ended up in Haven Arrest, and right. then uh, Care, right, Care Tallahassee, and then uh, the, tal- the 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 network. So God's just been kind of moving you around in, mm-hmm. in ministry, yeah. and so now it's something new. Yes, and uh, God's doing a whole new uh, yeah. phase in your life in yeah. ministry. Yes, and uh, so tell us about it. Well, it's funny you were just mentioning off air that uh, we were talking about our ages, and uh, and uh, somebody was saying. Talking to me, I, I heard a story about uh, Mickey Mantle, who was one of my childhood heroes, and he died uh, 63 years old. He was still a pretty young man, but he pretty much drank himself to death. And of course, he was a great baseball player, but he had a very, very uh, troubled life. And uh, he, he he got saved right at the very end of his life. And he made a comment one time. He said, "You know, if I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself." <laughs> 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 yeah. So I I had kind of hit a wall, not not really a wall, but a. Uh, uh, a, a mindset, I guess, a few years ago. I thought, you know, I'm about to turn 70, and uh, my dad died when he was 69. I had no premonitions of dying young or anything or early, but I, I just thought, well, you know, can't be going to live too much longer and and uh, just kind of enjoy these last years and kind of kick it into uh, to cruise control. And and here I am now, buddy. We're cranked up, <laughs> starting over again. So And then you do. When, yeah. when, you, when you get involved with something, you yeah, go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've just seen this over the years. Yeah. But God uses you because you, you you have these giftings. You're able to draw people together and, and help connect people in ministry, and, and uh, you seem to know how to get the funds raised. That's just I've just seen all this happen in the years that you've been doing ministry, and so so this is a, a totally different type of thing. Mm-hmm. You're going into the aspect of where you're helping to deal with the. The mental, emotional, psychological, yeah. all these sort of things. But you're not a doctor. No, no. No, no. So what is your role? Well, in fact, it's interesting you made that comment. Uh, everything has kind of morphed into the next thing. Okay. Uh, when I started out, I was at the church, of course, just teaching Sunday school. And uh, one thing led to another, and the rescue mission needed some help. And I, I went down there, as you know, the story to, oh, clo- yeah, to close yeah, it. Yeah. And uh, and ended up running it for 10 years. And out of that, as I, we were talking earlier, I got involved with the found that about 80% of the men that were at the rescue mission had been incarcerated at some point in their life. And so that caused me to get a little deeper into prison ministry. And then, of course, Care Tallahassee, that's what they specialized mm-hmm. in. And then right. one thing led to another, to another, to another. And this uh, – this evolution, again, birthed out of really personal experiences. Um, there was the piece of uh, the puzzle, and everybody knows this, but most people that are, or many people, a high percentage of the people that are on the streets and uh, in uh, homelessness uh, experience some kind of mental health issue. Even if they're not diagnosed with a mental health disease, if you're on the street, you're having some kind of problem. Yeah, right, right. And so... Uh, I, I never really had a really good answer for that. I, as you said, I'm not a doctor. I don't have any particular training in that area. And so, uh, you know, of course, we have the Bible and we have the Holy Spirit and discernment, and we've done the best we could over the years. And But it always troubled me when I would see somebody who 
was an otherwise normal person, quotes, mm-hmm. but but they just hit some really severe trauma in their life or something, and it just totally whacked them out, and they were they couldn't function. Right, and uh, I didn't have an answer for that. You know, we would go through the normal services, and God bless the agencies that try to help. You know, they're the medical professionals and so on. But any any real true uh, practitioner of any medicine that's been around for any length of time knows that there's a spiritual piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. They may not admit it, but they know it. Oh yeah, yeah. and so. Uh, through a course series of events over this last year and a half or so, we hit uh, uh, some some situations personally that caused me to look into this deeper, and actually caused me to get some help in that area. So, uh, you know, people have uh, I, I didn't finish telling that story about a friend of mine who I was struggling, and he said, uh, you know, you've just been the, doing this for too long, you know, with not enough breaks. And I said, no, no, you don't understand. I said the ministry is my oxygen, mm-hmm. and he said, there's the problem. Oh, God is supposed to be your oxygen. The ministry, oh. the ministry is supposed to be an outflow of that. It's not supposed to be what you live off of. And, you know, that sounds like a, just a cliche, but that's very important. So because if you – it's kind of like people that, you know, we get all excited about the gifts from God. Right. But we forget about the gift but, giver. But that's one of those things what you just said, that you, you, you have to dig in deeper. Yes. In order to fully understand – That's correct. The, the, what, what the brother is saying here. That's correct. Because there's foundation to that. But many times we're not able to to see no, it until no, sometimes no. God has to pull rugs out from yeah. underneath of us yeah. and all kinds of things yeah. to, to and, he yeah. and He will, yeah, He will, because uh, I like I said uh, I was kind of on uh, not consciously, but looking back, I was on kind of a cruise control pattern. Finally, got on top. We were fine. You know, you mentioned about raising money. I've never known how to raise money. Uh, Beth is really good at working at it because one of the things that that turned the corner for us on on the money aspect of it is. When we realized it was kind of like putting on the king's armor for us to raise money, we didn't know how to do that. You know, uh-huh. we were all we had worked. You know, we had paid paychecks and stuff. We didn't know anything about raising money or donations. Uh, but one of the things we finally figured out was two things. One is we're not asking for us; we're asking yeah. for people. That, I remember you, know, you tell me that yeah, once before, yeah, and that, that stuck yeah, in my mind. Yeah. yeah. And secondly, um, when it, when we say where God guides, He provides. That's not a cliche. If God calls you to something, He's going to provide one way or the other. Maybe not the way you want. Right, right. And maybe not the level you want. He does have some very unique ways. <laughs> yes, but I've, I could tell stories, and I've told you a lot of them, oh, but yeah. I could tell stories yeah. till the cows come home about things God did in supernatural ways. So we've had a lot of people over the years that look at our ministries and say, wow, and they'll come with their notebook in hand. <laughs> I want you to tell me how to do this. And when they get to the money part, I said, yeah, you've asked the wrong guy. So you're on your own here. I said, I, said, I can't. <laughs> in fact, I told a man just the other day, a very good, well-meaning brother in Christ who has an incredible ministry opportunity, and he wanted to raise some money. And he's and he's and we said we would help him, uh, not raise money, but help him with the ministry. And he said, we kind of kind of got into a crossroads. And he said, you know, I want to be successful so that I can support ministry. Uh-huh. And I said, well, that's a different thing than what I do. I do ministry, and, and God provides the money. Uh-huh. I don't get money and then go do ministry. I do ministry, and then God brings the money. Something says me that's not faith, what you're talking about there. <laughs> the other side. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. the other way, yeah. And, and, that's, yeah, yeah. and that's really, honestly, I'm not trying yeah. to be uh, uh, sanctimonious about it, but that's really what I tell people. I said, I, you, when you go into it thinking, I'm going to raise money, I've got to do this, you really kind of set yourself up. Yeah. Because if God, again, you either believe it or you don't. It's the essence of things not seen. Yes. If you see yes, it, that's right. then it's not faith anymore. That's right. If you do what God gives yeah. you to do, and if he's the one giving yeah. you to do it. Because there's a lot of good work that people do sure. that they're not called to do. Yeah. You know, there's things I see that I would love to help with, but that's not what God called me to do. So if I go out and start doing that on my own, I'm probably looking for some real trouble. Mm-hmm. And so the whether it's money or whatever, uh, right. people, I've always been blessed with uh, good workers, people that come around and uh, and want to be part of what we're doing. And uh, and my attitude about that is whether, we're the, whether we walk together a day, a season, or a lifetime, that's God's business. Mm-hmm. But I'm on this journey that God has called me on, and you're on a journey, and sometimes our paths will cross for a season. Like you and I, we come every now and then, we sit at the radio station. Really, we hardly ever see each other. That's true. That. That's true. But you're you're doing what God's called Usually you. Usually when I go, you call you, you're off on some <laughs> retreat, or you're, you're, you're on a cruise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so our paths are not uh, where, we, where we're yoked up and working together all the time. But uh, some people we are. Yeah. Some, uh, uh, many, most of the people that have worked in our ministries came through our ministry. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure you're like I am. There's a lot of people that stays in my mind, yeah. in my heart, yeah. and, and I don't talk to them all that often. Yeah. But when we connect, we connect, yeah. and we just kind of pick up where we left off. I've yeah. got a friend that I grew up across the street from in junior high school, 
and he lives in South Carolina. And, and you know, he and I see each other every few years now because of Facebook and phones costs and this, that we can see each other more often. But my wife will say, we're going to trip and I'll meet him for, for something to eat. And she'll say, you know, I've heard these stories. Uh, <laughs> 15 times and right. I'll tell the exact same stories <laughs> uh, she goes I'm just going to go in the RV and uh, and do some right. paperwork well y'all go ahead and enjoy yourself <laughs> and we do it's true we that's just true. enjoy it and, and, and there's probably 2% of our yeah. conversation is something new yeah it's just that familiarity that right. t- it's a touchstone right. I call it a touchstone but, but in ministry like you talk about you're, you're pursuing what God has called yeah. you to do right. and I'm pursuing what God's called me to do and yeah. sometimes yeah. our paths do cross yeah because it's beneficial yeah. to to what you do and what yeah. I do, yeah. and and so God uses that yes. because we're all we always have to remember yeah. we're on the same team. Yeah, <laughs> I said I stood in a graveyard buried by a previous wife in two thousand December nineteenth two thousand, and the Lord put very clearly on my heart, amongst other things, if you'll be faithful to tell my stories as I weave them through your life. I'm going to use you to bring thousands more into my kingdom. Wow. Well, when our past, yours and my specifically, what is this? This is just us sharing God stories. Sure, sure. Well, that's what God told me to do. Right, right. So yeah. it's great, you know, uh, yeah. Doug Apple or, or Scott Beagle or any of my friends that are in the radio business uh, or world. That's when you get a chance. It's not to be on the air. No. It's to share the news. Maybe one more person is going to listen to this broadcast. Well, that's what I say about this radio ministry. We are here to tell the story. Yeah. Because if we don't tell the story, that's right. then there's going to be other people going to tell it for us, and yeah. we're not going to like the way they tell it. Yeah. So we get the opportunity to tell it like it is. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, it's talking about the life and ministry of Pastor Glenn Burns or whoever it may be sitting yeah. in the chair where you're sitting at. The story is being told. Yeah. And I encourage people, mm-hmm. <laughs> you've never been on this show, call me yeah. Yeah. and we'll make it happen yeah. because I want to give you an opportunity to tell your story. If you're involved in Christian ministry, yeah. this is an opportunity to do so. Yes. And as I say, it's a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant alive and well. Amen. So, so now, I see on your shirt, this is sitting right across from it, it says Sanctuary Clinics. Clinic. I don't see the word clinic. Uh, Sanctuary, and I don't know what it says. It says Monticello. Monticello. All right, so. <laughs> but uh, you have a dove. Yeah. And any time I see a dove, that tells me that you want the Holy Spirit to, yeah, yeah. to bless this ministry. Yeah. In fact, we, we don't want the Holy Spirit to bless this ministry. We just follow the Holy Spirit into this go. ministry. There you go. So, so Sanctuary, yeah. tell us about it. Yeah. Sanctuary Clinics was uh, actually opened officially April 15th of this year. Okay. Uh, but David Hoskins, uh, the founder, and his wife, Ceci, uh, were, they helped start a ministry. He co-founded a ministry called Honey Lake Clinic in um, in uh, Greenville area. Right, and uh, they were running the, and it's an incredible Christian ministry. Uh, it's uh, one of the few, the only one I know of in America that's a that's a biblically based Christian ministry in house. There's a lot of good Christian ministers, uh, excuse me, uh, medical people, but this is an in house, a resident, or like a thirty day program type of thing where people actually come and live there. And while they work on traumas or issues, whatever it is, from a biblical perspective, but using best practice uh, therapies. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's that was phenomenally successful. Uh, Dr. Hoskins helped start that, and they, or co-founded that. And then uh, he was on sabbatical uh, a year or so ago. And uh, his one of the things his mother told him on near the end of her life was, uh, David, this is wonderful what you're doing, but uh, medical uh, mental health clinics are very expensive. Uh-huh. And she said, this is incredible what you're doing. So proud of you. But you got to do this for people who can't pay you, can't help, can't give anything back. And David uh, said one of the first things that crossed his mind was Glenn Burns because he knows the people I have can't give you anything back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, so, and David had helped us. He had, he had yeah. one of our contracts that we used to have uh, to where the guys from Good Samaritan would go out and work places. That was one of the places we did that with. And so we had that kind of working relationship right. with okay. him. So when, when I hit a bump last year, David was helping me personally uh, get through some tra- uh, challenges, and we were talking about that aspect of it. So he was coming up with a formula of how he could do offer the same world-class uh, clinical help from a biblical perspective uh, and also be able to offer to people who didn't have any money. So there are people that pay to go to sanctuary, uh, and significantly less than they pay for anywhere else. Uh, but they also have been people that came through our men's program, our, our work program, not just men anymore, um, that had no money. 
Mm-hmm. And so the expansion of that, uh, David's vision that God's called him to do is to create these all over the country. Wow. And so, so my, I told him, I said, well, my uh, Jerusalem is uh, Leon County and, you know, the Big Bend area. But I'll go with you as far as, you know, our journey will let us. You right. know, do as much as I can. I, I love this because I'm seeing now firsthand, I see people get help that maybe have any range of, of, of mental health issues from traumas to addiction to all kinds of everything in between. Chronic, uh, just something that just happened in their life. And I see them come in, in some cases, almost in a fetal position, mm-hmm. just totally destroyed and traumatized. And then I see them leave. And some, there's no set thing. It's a 30-day program, but they can go. Some people stay for months. Some people stay for five or six weeks. There's you know, no set thing. They just have a. They just right. re-up, so to speak. Yeah, so that's one of my questions. So, so the clinic is a place where they actually come stay. Yes. And it's a, it's a little, literal physical place. Yes. It's in Monticello. Right. And it's, uh, I think we have current capacity. I think it's 26, if I remember right. Okay. And uh, it's not, it doesn't feel clinical when you go there. Uh, it feels more communal. There's a yeah. real community. But feel I'm just to looking it. at the reality of it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a I'm a dreamer, but I'm also a realist. Yeah. I mean, um, to be able to fund something like oh, this, yeah. where you're 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 having a literal place where people oh. are coming. Yeah. You're you're providing housing for them and and uh, food for them. Yeah. How do you do this? It's uh, again going to sound a little cliche, but uh, where God guides, He provides. And what happened was, is David had the inspiration. And, uh, and his mother gave him the revelation, and God just gave him the illumination. He showed him different people, and he would share his dreams and visions. And, and, um, and uh, when we would talk to people, and people started calling us up out of the blue. David, I saw David actually, actually sacrifice what little bit of money we had. He gave it to somebody to be able to go into another clinic, not even his clinic, that he thought would help them. And that was, I mean, it was a wow. significant portion of their little, <laughs> little bit of person. They don't, these people, by the way, drive old vehicles. They live in a, they literally moved out of the house because there's no room for them because of all the patients into a, an old used uh, RV trailer. That's where he lives. Uh-huh. Uh, so, I'm, I mean, I'm behind the scenes. I've been with these people for a year and a half. <laughs> this is the real deal. So this is a guy who has training and education. He could be someplace making millions, yes. of, uh, not millions, but lots and lots of money. Yeah. But he's chosen yeah. to to live a yeah. more humble life, yes. so that he can do this ministry for yes. people. Now, as you say, some can pay, some do not. Correct. And so they're coming to this little physical place, mm-hmm. seeking help, mm-hmm. and you're giving it to them. Yes, it's that's that's, an, that's just an amazing yeah. thing because I, see, I'm, as, as you were talking about this, my mind's taking a little little tour around town. How and, unusual and, for you. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that this is what I'm seeing in Tallahassee. Now, this is fairly recent. Yeah. I've seen people with little tents on the side yeah. of the road mm-hmm. spending the nights there. Yeah. I've seen the people with these uh, shopping carts just mm-hmm. full yeah. of just stuff. All of their worldly possessions. Yeah, and they're, and they're just laying there. Yeah. And like I say, this may have been happening maybe uh, on the west side of Tallahassee, mm-hmm. maybe the south side. But I'm seeing, I, I yeah. saw a guy with a tent on the south road over near Killarne, which is very unusual yeah. for our community. Yeah. And I'm going, okay, the question you said a little ago, how did they get there? Yeah. How did this happen? A, a number of things have, yeah. have come together. As we all know, our world has changed. Oh, absolutely. In the last, yeah. just dramatically. Yeah. It's kind of like technology, how it limped along for decades and yeah. centuries, and then all of a sudden it just escalated beyond our, our ability to keep up with it. Same thing has happened in mental health yeah. and in just emotional health. Yeah. And people, you know, you throw the 2020, the COVID and everything else into it, and now the and politics and how the world is just gyrating. Right. And it, it's not unusual to have people that would have led a normal, what we would call a normal life up till now, just really uh, can't cope. Yeah. And so, yeah. what do you do? You know, in some ways, people that have been chronically uh, homeless were better prepared mm-hmm. because they're used to surviving on the street. Sure. There's a lot of people we see now that are just not street uh, savvy. And they're, they're, whether they're on the street literally or close to the street, you know, they're living in hotel rooms or this or that. Right. It's an epidemic. And what happens is, uh, I remember there was a there's a Christian movie, and I can't remember what the name of the movie was, but in the movie, there's a young woman with a little girl, and uh, she's living in her little, little old beat up car. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, as the story progresses, she tells how this happened. She said yeah. her husband died. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, she just was so distraught. Mm-hmm. She she lost her job. Yeah, 
and then it was all a progression. Yes. It was the worst. She didn't just one day end up being homeless. Right. It was a progression of events that happened in her life right. that caused her to end up being on the streets. Right. And, you know, we've heard for years that you know, most of America is one paycheck away from being homeless. Mm-hmm. And that's happened. Yeah, Ronald Reagan told us. <laughs> a good, a good yeah. chunk of people, yeah. whether they're homeless, homeless or not, they're effectively homeless. Well, the other thing that happens is that they may have family. Mm-hmm. But after a while, yeah. they kind of burn the bridges with their families, and right. their families are done with them. Right. And I've, yeah. I've seen this same thing play out. Yeah. And a lot of it is because of what's happening mentally and emotionally yes. to this person. That's correct. Right. That's correct. And, and, you know, and, and loved ones and family, they're, they're frustrated. They don't know what to do. They, they, they really don't know how to help. We get those calls all yeah. the time. In fact, David uh, Hoskins, the man I was telling you about, his primary ministry He's a brilliant man, and he's got all kind of uh, visions and, and just incredibly talented. But his real heart of mission, I, when I first met him five or six years ago, when he was first starting Honey Lake Clinic, uh, I rode around the car with him one day. He, I was showing him Tallahassee, showing him the ministries and this and that. And he said, look, I can ride with you all day. Be glad to do it. He said, but the only one thing that I cannot uh, miss, I'm on a, a national hotline, a, a trauma or mercy hotline, and when my number rolls up, I answer the phone. Mm-hmm. And I listen to this man talked down a suicidal victim uh, uh, almost a victim in Detroit and get him to a clinic in Detroit I heard him talk to the next call was a guy in Oregon and I saw I heard him doing things I thought this is an anointed man wow. and what I've heard him say since then is when we would talk about what he can do can't do when we're making plans we can be in the middle of a staff meeting and that emergency hotline calls in, he answers it so he's sitting in your car in Tallahassee dealing with somebody in Detroit, Detroit and in Oregon I listened to three of his calls, and I didn't. I no longer wanted to show him anything. I just wanted to sit and listen to him take calls. And wow! He, and he takes those calls as if God Himself just called him and said, "David, help this person." Wow! I mean, he is so wow. anointed and so gifted. When he he had a window of time when he was uh, changing ministries where he wasn't. Uh, he was supposed to be while they were fleshing out the who gets who has the right to do what. He couldn't take his calls. Oh my gosh! He <laughs> he was suffering. Yeah. Because, he because was, it's so ingrained in him. It's yeah, so ingrained yeah. in him to help people like that. Wow, wow. Okay, so here in Monticello, you have this place, and then uh, it's up and running now. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. How long has that been? Since April 15th. Of this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how many people have we seen go through here so far? Well, I don't keep the counts much, but uh, I know I think our capacity now is about 26, and they're, they're most of them are for 30 days or so, five, four to five, six weeks. And um, and it's been a constant. Now we didn't have twenty six. We've been constantly adding to it uh, the capacity right. right along. So you probably touched a hundred people at least. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah. 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 And and by the way, he still takes those calls. The vast majority of the people he helps never come to us. He sends them somewhere else. They're in some place, and he goes, you know, he uh, folks on the family has an hour free of telephone counseling. Here's here's who you call. Call them. Call this one. Go to this clinic or whatever. He's not. It's not like wow. he's trying to build his clinic. He's trying to minister to God. So he's feeding God's sheep. He's doing exactly wow. what Jesus said to tell Peter. But you know, as you think about this, so when people come to the point in their life where they're willing to go to this type yeah. of place, mm-hmm. that's a big step oh. because most people will they, 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 they try to as they self diagnose yeah. <laughs> and try to deal with it themselves, or they become a hermit yeah. <laughs> and it's totally withdrawn from society whatsoever Mm -hmm. and those are i would assume that's what's happened to these people that we're seeing with 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 shopping carts yeah they fell through the crack yeah and nobody was there to catch them many of the people that come to us uh uh, you're talking about there not it's not easy to come i the typical i have one guy one young man out of georgia's and just popped in my mind he called us and committed to come three or four times uh-huh. I mean, I'll be there this afternoon. I'll be there, you know, tomorrow. I'll be there Tuesday, whatever. And he just couldn't pull the trigger. Uh, you know, we're so prone to want to. Well, I'll, you know, you wake up, then you wake up. I'll, I'll feel better in the morning, and you're right, just constantly right. sinking and sinking wow. and sinking. Wow. And uh, but then when they come, and they're usually when they first come, they're pretty traumatized. They're you know upset, crying, whatever. And then to, uh, I was just a lady just came in yesterday and uh, we'll watch Sweet Beth talking to her. In fact, we were about to eat dinner. It's a kind of a community room to eat dinner, and uh, there was only one seat next to Beth. And uh, and I saw this lady come in. I said, Beth, I'm gonna tell this lady to sit with you, okay? And then I went over and sat with some of the guys because I knew that when Beth sat next to when this woman sat next to Beth and got a chance, she was so so traumatized just having she. This woman just told me, and of course we don't share information about our patients, but she told me that she 
was born and raised and lived her entire life on a little island somewhere near, it's in the state of Virginia, but it's on a barrier island or something. You have to take a boat to get there. Hmm. There's 400 people that live there on that island. Wow. She's never lived anywhere else. Now, she's here in Monticello, Florida uh, with people, and we, obviously in a traumatic situation. Right. And, and, and so the first person she, other than the check-in, the first, first meal she shared with us, she sat next to Beth Burns, yeah. who is one of the most nurturing, comfort-giving wow. people there. And but that, see, that's but, God. But this story is, told, is being told over and over again. And you said a little while ago that things have changed. My feeling is it's going to get worse yes. before it gets better. Oh, yeah. Because we're dealing with some, there are some economic things that are happening mm -hmm. where the, it's, it's all laid out, but we're not feeling the effects of it yes, yet. Yes, that's right. And especially in, in the area of some of our farmers yep. that, are, that are having to cut back on crops because they can't get the natural gas and, and all these things mm -hmm. that that's happened, but we're, it's, it hasn't flowed yeah. downhill. Yeah. And more and more people are going to be in situations where they're going to be losing their homes mm -hmm. And yeah. all of that's coming. One, I, one of our uh, patients came uh, a few months ago. She's home now doing great. She was a cattle rancher, multi-generational cattle rancher out of South Dakota. I mean, these are not people that are, you know, stereotypical, you know, uh -huh. street right. people, whatever. This right. is, these are normal Americans that just got so traumatized by something in their life. And, and that's the, the whole, like I said, the whole uh, world uh, scene now that there, there's need for help. That's why our new ministry is called Sanctuary Clinics, plural, because David has a vision to do this all around the country. Uh, and the only thing that's going to hold us back is just the infrastructure to build it out. We've already had requests from Texas to South Dakota. They want to start one up there, the, the lady that came down with us, because we got to have one of these in, our, in, our, in the Midwest. Uh, uh, South Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, We've had calls from all over people saying we, we need some something like this because, first off, obviously it's a little better if you could be a little closer to home. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, that makes sense. You know, just, yeah. just, the, just the, you know, I, I told Beth sometimes when we travel in an RV, sometimes you, when you just, you know, you don't realize how many people you walk, when you walk into your normal grocery store, your normal pharmacy, they not even be people you know, but their faces you see. Right. Sometimes yeah, you, you feel comfortable. And when okay. you're somewhere in a different part yeah. of the country, especially if you're going through trauma, yeah. And everything is new to you. Everything is foreign to you. And it's hard for the brain to adjust to all those things in a, in a oh, traumatized absolutely. state. Absolutely. So our goal is, and that's yeah. where the Holy Spirit comes in. Our yeah. goal is to connect them first and foremost. The, the, the class I lead, uh, I'm not a therapist, of course, or anything. And what I do Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock is if we, we have what we call spiritual breakfast. Our regular breakfast time is 8.30. So it's not mandatory. Uh, they don't have to be in my class. But it's a spiritual breakfast. We just sit down and we do kind of like this. I said, well, what do you all like to talk about today? And we talked about everything from a young kid that was with us the other day, his iPod or pad or whatever those things are called, broke down. And he was, I mean, he came here traumatized. And now he's now world, he's full of trauma Because he's linked. That's his <laughs> right, world. Right. And he's really, truly upset. Wow, wow. And so we were just kind of, so we talked about his his iPad or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, about how to, you know, that thing in your hand, that Bible thing, that actually doesn't require any, any, any boot up. You can just open the pages. <laughs> right. But now, uh you you have a facility. So how did this facility come about? I mean, you're starting a whole new ministry, and if what you described to me, it's it's an old mansion, right? Yeah, it's an old built 1915. So so how did how did this come about? Again, God. Well, let me show you how God manifested Himself. Uh, a, a man who had gone through some other programs with David, okay. uh, had some pretty significant successful businessman, believed in aftercare. You know, you can only do so much in 30 days. You're not going to. You can you can uh, you can make a paradigm shift, but you can't start a new pattern. Really right, early. right. And so this man had had uh, had gone through several things, and he had gone out to Honey Lake, and he said, "I'd I'd like to have a home." He'd gone out there several times. He said, "I'd like to have a place, kind of an aftercare place, that we could provide for people." And so he bought this building, and it was in terrible shape. And he bought this building thinking he could do that. Well, as we talked to earlier, there are people that know how to run a business, and people know how to do business, and people know how to you know do all pieces of the business. David knows how to create, and he knows how to establish, and not only the medical part, not only the spiritual part, but also the 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 putting it together part, mm -hmm, right? And uh, because he has a family history of doing that, worldwide ministries, and so this this one fellow got a hold of David and said, "Look, uh, what are you doing?" Because he was on sabbatical. He says, "Well, I'm I'm praying." seeing what God's going to do next. He said, well, would you consider taking this house? I know you're the man that knows how to do this kind of stuff and uh, and and kind of replicating what you did at Honey Lake only with the aftercare piece of it, not so much the front end of it. Huh. One thing led to another. So he donated the property 
and then another person just a few months into it donated you know like a million dollars to improve the property really oh yeah it's crazy right. so he's just going on sabbatical he, yeah he, he would do when, when he left the honey lake the going to sabbatical he had no idea that he, no, would, he wouldn't be coming no. back here other than the fact that his mother had planted the seed right but to be able it. to do this that was it. without having the the big fees correct such as this correct Wow. <laughs> and here we are. And now, so, so they moved over there. David and, and Ceci moved over there a year ago, probably two years maybe now. Uh, maybe maybe right at two years, I'm guessing. I get over there. Beth and I get over there and kind of partnered up with them uh, last year. In fact, he called me in uh, uh, September and said, I'd like for you to come out here and spend a month with us. I said, I can't do that. I, you know, I got things to do. I'm, I run a ministry, and et cetera. And he goes, I need you to come out here and just be here with us and just kind of practice God's presence. And you know, I said, hey, I'm all about practicing God's presence, but I got to go to work. And he said, well, uh, come out here and commit to a month. I said, look, David, I can't do that. I said, but I will do this. I'll commit a week. Well, that okay. was September 22nd of nineteen or uh, 2021. Okay. And I'm still there. Uh, <laughs> Same thing happened to you. It happened yeah, to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm still there. And God just doing so much. It looks up and we said, wow. There you go. Yeah. But, but okay. So you see the hand of God working here. Because, because what you described to us, I see the need. Mm-hmm. I mean, the need is, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you've got uh, Family situations where a family is struggling because there's somebody in that family that says that something's not yeah. quite right, and they need this kind of help right. not only for them but for the benefit of the family. Right. And say, well, we can't afford this. Yeah. Who, who could who could afford this? Yeah. And yeah. so you are are that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. And, and of course, to have somebody like David, you've talked about David Hoskins, who I do not know, mm. but for what you've described to us, he has the the giftings yes. to be able to start this process. Yeah. Now, is he the only one at this point as far as, uh, what do you call it, doctors? Is, is he a doctor? Or? Uh, yeah, David Hoskins is the executive director right. and founder. His wife, uh, Dr. Sessi Akota, okay. uh, she's a Nigerian, uh, Hoskins, is a, she's a psychiatrist. She's, she's, okay. And then we have other contracted psychiatrists and therapists that come and work there. Then we have an administrative team now. We have a financial guy. We have, uh, of course, you know, operations and, you know, people there. We have me. I'm spiritual care. We have a, ther- a head of therapy, a head of clinical, uh, a head of financial, head of operations. Okay. And then, and I, I, mean, I was amazed before you start giving all this list. And all these people, are they doing volunteer? No, no, they're so, all employees. Um, I'm, you just blew my mind. Yeah. I'll tell me, I'm going to tell you, 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 you just have to be there. I, the only thing I can equate this to, I was thinking about this when, when I made that previous comment and you started talking about it, and I thought, this is the only thing I can describe is like when Jesus was walking this earth and he was doing the things he was doing and the crowd started following him because right. they've just never seen anything like this before. Right. Well, that's what he's doing now. Yeah. And then, then he turned around and said, okay, come follow me. That's correct. And, and, and you haven't seen anything yet. Uh, and so when you think about that, what what God is doing through David, I'm sure the people you interview, I mean, the, we all, the hopes, the wishes, and dreams people, uh, God's doing that things like that all over the place. We just don't hear about it. That's why this is such a critical right, conversation. Right. But I believe, again, there's people for, uh, like Esther, a person for such a time as such that. Such a time as this, yes. And there are people that God brings into our beings, if you will, brings yeah. into our presence. And I believe that what David Hoskins is doing is not only ordained and not only anointed, but I believe it's one of those critical timings in history because, and now what, just think what the many, enemy meant for evil, all this uh, mental distress and trauma and everything that we're all going through. And then he brings a guy out of David's background and his both his family background and his spiritual background and his crashes, his own crashes, who, who is one of the most qualified people in the world, not because of his degrees, but because of his experiences and wow. because of his belief in his absolute uh, in, in, um, immeasurable. I mean, the guy I told you, I've lived in the house there for, with him for a while, and I've, he gets up at four o'clock in the morning and prays with people all over the world, not just not just in our little local, not just in his congregation or something, all over the world for that world perspective, the biblical world perspective. And so we're taking that and putting feet to it and addressing one of the most wow. critical areas wow. in, in our current time. I mean, mental health and something else that, that occurred to me here you you rattling off the, this, these different names different mm-hmm. positions we're talking about Monticello yeah. Florida <laughs> I mean not exactly a no. mega city no where, where did all these people come from David said uh, he told me one time when he was showing me around he goes you know he said 
Leon County is, you know, the state capital and they've got resources and such. He says, but but Jefferson County, Madison County, uh, even Gaston County, they're some of the poorest counties in the state right, right here. And he said, why not do this here? Yeah, why and, not? Why not uh, let God do what God does in out of Bethlehem? You, you know, know what? You know what? Jefferson County one main claim to fame is no signal lights in the county. no traffic. <laughs> you, you knew <laughs> they're they're proud of it too. They need some, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but they're tell not me put about them it. in there because that's our claim to fame. <laughs> that's right. We the go whole, from we go from Georgia yeah, to the coast, yeah, and not the a whole single. county. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> in fact, I was on the way in tonight, and I was seeing the, you know, Monticello is becoming a suburb. It's a bedroom community. For yeah, right. Us. It is. And it I'm is. driving in. I saw all the cars coming through the little circle there, and I thought, oh, man. Yeah. We're, 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 we thought we were hiding out over here. Well, I tell you, you come down to my little business yeah. on, uh, at 5 o'clock, uh, and this is a continual left-hand yeah, turn. Yeah, Monticello yeah, Highway. Yeah, zoop, yeah, zoop, yeah. zoop, 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 yeah. zoop. I mean, and, and it's just from about, oh, for about an hour and a half. Yeah. It's just constant. Just no, no, nobody hardly even stopping. Yeah. Just yeah. taking that left-hand turn. And, and mm-hmm. I'll tell you, Jack, seriously, I believe one of the reasons God's using this and doing all this, bringing all this together is Monticello is a ripe spiritual community ripe mm-hmm. i mean i all the churches in that area they have we have community uh, get togethers on a regular basis there are people on that i would say on the corner but they're really in the circle uh with prayer placards all the time and uh, you know proudly proclaiming the gospel i believe it's a rich area and i never thought of monticello or jefferson county that way huh. uh, but uh but i've been in it now and i see that god's god's planted some firm uh, uh fertile ground there and some firm ministries and fertile ministries are growing out of that. It's amazing how God just brings things together. Yeah, yeah. You know, it reminds me of this song, a group called The Parish Family. They have something, that's my God. Yeah. And yeah. that's what he does. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and this is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. For those of you who may have just joined us, uh, my name is Pastor Jack King. I I get to do this every Sunday morning, and I enjoy it immensely. Uh, Brother Glenn Burns is my guest. He's been with me on this show many, many times over the years. Been doing this a little over 20 years now. As I told you before, it's show number 1,099. And, of course, if you know me, then you know that Pastor King loves Southern gospel music. And I always play at least one song for you here on Sunday morning. This is a Ray Price softly and tenderly. Calling Oh sinner Come home Amen. I like that. <laughs> this is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. And uh, I know a lot of you are on your way to church this morning. I hope that you are looking to have a great time of worship and uh, in the house of the Lord. But if you have a, a need for a church and you are looking for a place to worship, why don't you come and meet with us today at Freedom Road. I'm the pastor of Freedom Road Christian Ministry, 720 Capital Circle Northeast. We are in a storefront there, but we do love visitors. Why don't you come and worship with us? 11.05 is our start time. You can uh, find us on the web, frcm.us. Also, you can uh, catch this show on podcast if you want to listen to it again or share it with a friend. As I said, it's show number 1099. If you type in Pastor Jack King, Tallahassee, it'll come up. There's all kinds of talk shows there for you. Also, the daily broadcast, which airs here on 94.1 at 11 o'clock, Monday through Friday. And... Uh, First, then there's the Saturday Night Gospel Sing. It comes on at 7 o'clock here on 94.1 on Saturday night. It's a full hour of the, as I say, the best music on the planet, <laughs> Southern Gospel style. We crank it up and have a good time. So I enjoy, invite you to join me for that show as well. I want to just kind of follow up on something uh, a couple weeks ago. I had uh, Brother Joe West, who's the director of the uh, Veterans Day Parade here in Tallahassee. I thought the parade went outstanding. And uh, I heard uh, Joe on uh, uh, Preston Scott's show, and uh, he was talking about, he says, it doesn't matter if it rains, we're still going to have the parade. And I said, you go for it, Brother Joe. (laughs) And uh, it went real well. He allowed us, hooked it up for me to be able to ride in a Corvette in the parade. I had a driver by the name of Greg, and he was just a fine man. We We just hit it off so very, very well. That was an awful lot of fun. 
And of course, uh, I'm kind of a car guy. <laughs> so to get to ride in a Corvette, that worked real well for me. But I thought it went very, very well on the Veterans Day Parade. And I applaud all of those who put it together. And of course, we do thank, thank all of our veterans for their service and the things that they have done to make our country free. All right, let's get back. <laughs> Brother Glenn Burns. Well, we've just pretty much solved all the problems of the universe, I do believe, <laughs> so, so far. Uh, Brother uh, Glenn has uh, been involved in several ministries over the years and been on the show, him and his wife Beth. Uh, I don't know how many times you've been on the show. It's been, been a lot over, mm-hmm. over the years. And I kind of watched as God has just used you all in different capacities of ministry. And, and really, the things that we've talked about today, it really does make sense in the aspect that you're the first time that, that you stepped out of the uh, or the confounds of the church that you were involved in, you saw the needs that are at the Haven Arrest. Mm-hmm. That's, to me, that same passion mm-hmm. to help people are still there. Yeah. It's, but now we're, we're looking at, okay, you can, you can feed them. It's like, I was telling you a story about a lady that I, we met and we gave her some food that she could eat. Well, that's that's going to last for a few hours. Mm-hmm. But she's going to get hungry again. Yeah. And a lot of times you say, why are you in this situation where you're ha- having to go out here and ask people to give you food? What happened here? Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is mm-hmm. mental, emotional, psychological, all of those things mm-hmm. that if you don't deal with that, you're not going to change the yeah. situation. Yeah. You, you can give them – well, okay, years ago when we first came to pastor the, the church here, uh, there was a couple that would come, and uh, and the, they'd show up on a Sunday night after right after church. They, they'd come in the, the lady would come in the building, and the, the guy would, would sit out there underneath the holly bush smoking his cigarette and mm-hmm. send his wife in to do the bidding for him. Mm-hmm. And so – the former pastor of the church, he was a real uh, soft heart, and, and I am too, to a lot of ways, but, I, but I've kind of dealt with these type of things. We did this for a few, a few weeks, and finally I told her, I said, look, I said, go get your husband. Bring him in here. I'm going to tell you all something. And I told him, I said, look, we want to help you all, because just giving you a little money every now and then is not helping you. I said, we want to help you. And I got some people in the church that, that know how to negotiate through the state situ- situation to get you some help. I said, they're going to take you home with them tonight. And then tomorrow, they're going to help you get help so we get you off the streets. And so they went home with them. They slipped out the bedroom window mm-hmm. that night. Mm-hmm. And uh, we didn't see them for a while. Yeah. And that, that told me a lot mm-hmm. because a lot of times, the reason why people are on the streets is because something that's going on upstairs. And I'm talking mm-hmm. the mind, the, that type of thing. That if you if you don't address those situations, then you're not going to change the behavior. Mm-hmm. And so your your uh, director, uh, uh, I'm, they, I'm, in, they, I'm in spiritual care for yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, your leader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is his title? Oh, uh, David. Yeah. He, well, I don't know. He's the co-founder. He said he's the longest uh, tenured patient so far. Uh, he's, he's, he, that's, that's his official title. <laughs> is, 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 does he have a sense of humor? Is he, is oh, yes. Funny? Okay, yes. I'm looking forward to meeting yeah, him. Yeah, he's a very, very clever man. Okay. Uh, but yeah, David, uh, all the things you just mentioned, uh, I was thinking about uh, another ministry that we use as a part of our curriculum is a thing called Marked Men for Christ. And it's, uh, it's, they're all over the country now, but uh, they, it's a men's uh, Marked have, Men. Mark, for, marked Men for Christ, as in sealed by Christ. They didn't, yeah, okay. they didn't figure they'd call them sealed men because they might get connotations with <laughs> the Navy. Right. Uh, but Marked Men for Christ, and, and one of the things we deal with that is five primary wounds that men deal with that, that, that things filter through. Okay. Uh, fear, sadness, shame, uh, deceit. Uh, these, are, these are the things, and fear being the one uh, that I was just thinking about when you were speaking. When somebody's been on the street like that for long enough, for whatever reason, however they got there, they have a fear that, for example, in that case, we're not going to be able to do this. Uh, you know, it's not so much, you know, we, we look at a situation and say, well, you know, you got what you deserve. You know, a lot of people say, okay, one of the funniest lines I've ever heard, and it's really sad, but it's it's funny because uh, a homeless person told me this, a person experienced a homelessness, said a uh, guy yells out to him, people, yell at him, you know, get a job. And he said, I thought, well, that's a great idea. I didn't think about that. I'll just go get a job and solve all my problems. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, if you don't understand, there's this whole series of things. That oh, you, yeah. you alluded to it earlier. Yeah. Once you don't have a job, once you don't have a place to live, once you don't have clothes, and it gets down to where do you go to the bathroom when you're a homeless person? Right. Legally. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, think about that. Yeah. Restaurants don't want you to just come in no, there. No, And, of course, the longer you're out there, the smellier you get and the more disheveled you get and so right. on. So it's a really vicious cycle. But all the way back at the other end of the spectrum, just the average Joe or Jane just trying to do life, struggling today, and you and you touched on this earlier about the the uh, epidemic that's going on. You know, we think that the pandemic was something. This is this is a way way beyond that because it's it's not something that you can just give a shot or that you can just wait it out. Right. It gets worse the longer right. you wait it out. You know, the more and more of the infrastructure starts to fall apart. And then I used to speak uh, when I was at the rescue mission. One of my favorite lines was I used to tell people I'm in a room full of homeless people. Never remember, and I'd have 150 or so men sitting there. And I'd say, you know, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is the government's not coming. <laughs> but the good news is the government's not coming. <laughs> because the government is not, the government right, formality right, wise right. is not our answer. Yeah, yeah. If, if we do all this work we're doing with mental health, that's why this is such an important piece that it's a spiritual, biblically based version of it. Because like you said before, it's akin to giving somebody a little bit of food and they're going to be hungry later. Right. If we help somebody get through a crisis, and we don't attach that. All we're talking about when it's all said and done is Jesus to go out and make disciples. This is just disciple making. Mm-hmm. It's when we think about making disciples, we think about teaching somebody the, you know how to quote scripture. Disciple making is teaching somebody how to live a Christian life, right? And that's all and, the and whole about, aspect of life and about faith. Yes, and so when you're yeah. teaching somebody about how to walk with the Lord, it yes, there's going to be certain like if you have a, a bad heart, and I'm trying to disciple you well one of the things we have to do is go to your heart doctor every now and then right. and we have to make sure right. your heart's functioning yeah well same thing with mental health you know if somebody has gotten so out of whack or maybe there's a chemical imbalance or any any combination of things uh if you don't address those things you can preach till your tongue falls out right but if the, but right. if the brother or sister can't it's like the demoniac yeah. until he got delivered you could scream and yell at him all you want to and all right, that's going to do is right. exacerbate the situation. Yeah, and the thing about it is, it goes back to the same thing about uh, feeding them. If somebody's sitting there and they're starving, they're not going to listen to you because no. they're hungry. Correct. But you, you feed them, and then, then, then you can have a conversation. And the same thing with this. If you, you address some of the mental issues, yeah. then you can deal with the physical aspect. Think, think of about it, it if you, when you've had the flu, when you personally had the flu. You don't feel well. You're not, you know, you don't want visitors. You don't want to hear information. You don't want to watch television. You just want to take something and, and feel better right, and, and right. sleep and, and, and sleep it off and so on. Well, when somebody's having a distressed life that's just growing and growing and growing, and they're just, it's, it's kind of like a, I, I helped a dog one time years and years ago when I was a little boy. This uh, neighborhood dog got hit, and he ran under, we had our houses were off the ground. He ran under the house, and I didn't know you don't go and try to help a dog that's been wounded. So I crawled under there to try to help him out. Well, guess what he did? He bites you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I'm trying to help him. Yeah. yeah. But he's wounded and he's right, lashing right. out. That's a good analogy. Yeah. He, he can't, he, you yeah. can't, I can't help him uh, until I can stabilize him. Right. I have to right. get a blanket over him and do this and that. Yeah. Well, when people are having mental health issues and crises, you know, we can criticize them. We can say, how'd you get there? And you shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. Or don't you know this? Or if you had enough faith, you know, you'd do this or that. And they're just trying to breathe. Right. And right. we're and we're so when we go back to what Jesus said, just deal with them the way Jesus dealt with them. Right. When he talked right. to the demoniac, whether he was talking to the woman and caught in adultery, whether he was talking to the woman at the well, uh, where he was feeding people, whether he was talking to the the hypocritical Pharisees or whatever, he met people where they were at, and he didn't. And he went there with what he knew, and he met them. Right. We have to do the same thing. Yeah. Because of the the healing hand yes. comes, comes from the compassion heart. That's correct. And the compassion heart is what's led you all to do what you're doing. Yeah. There because you see the suffering. Yeah. I mean, most of us, yeah. and I, I include myself, yeah. that we we see it, yeah. but we walk on by. Yeah. And then sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you can't just walk on by, because somehow or another you get personally touched by yeah. it, and it and it causes us to have a. A soul searching, yeah, and and uh, the the thing is, is that what we are about to face, and I don't I don't mean to be negative, mm-hmm. but I just I'm looking down the road and I see that this is gonna this situation is gonna get worse. I look at that as um, like evangelism. the The smallest light shines bright in the darkest room, mm. and the more difficulty our country's in, the greater our opportunity is the church is. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we could say, oh, my gosh, you know, yeah. we gotta, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Or we can say, oh, my gosh, look what we get to do. Yeah. 
Look at the look at the generation we get to be. As Wayne Cadero said, he's a he's a pastor. He said, "Hard times are good times for the yeah. gospel." Yeah. Because yeah. when when people are having hard yeah. times, they're they're more inclined to listen. Yeah. Because you, you take the flip side of that when. And not too long, you know, we, our economy's booming, mm-hmm. and everything, everybody's doing well. But well, nobody's paying much attention to their spiritual side yeah. then because it's all going well. Yeah. But when that flips, then we start looking for answers. Uh-huh. A lot of times we're looking into the spiritual realm yeah. for those answers. I saw a great uh, church marquee, and I'm sure it's been all over the place, but it said, uh, normal is not coming back, but Jesus is. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. That's yeah. true. And thank God. <laughs> So yeah. I would, you know, not to wish pain on anybody, but um, if this is what it takes, and like I said, think about, uh, again, such a time as this, as a generation of Christians, the church in this generation has one of the greatest opportunities in all time history because of the mediums, because of the, the technologies, we can reach people oh, yeah. all around the world yeah. that, it, that nobody would have ever been able to reach before. I think before. this is what Jesus was talking about when he talked about in the last days, he'll pour out his spirit. Yes, and I also, uh, uh, when people complain about things, I said, well, uh, you know, this, the Bible said it in the end times. Well, welcome to the end times. Mm-hmm. So you can cry about it or you can say, well, you know, what an honor right. that I get to be here uh, in this part of the history yeah. that we can go when people are not so successful that they won't listen. Yeah, that reminds me of the scripture. It says, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Yes. That he send forth laborers yeah. to the harvest because the harvest is white. Yeah. And it's ready to be harvested. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I, I think that uh, this is just kind of coming to me in the way of revelation now, even as we're talking. Because yeah. you know, we're describing the need that's there. It's going to get greater. Mm-hmm. And uh, the need for people who have the capacity and heart mm-hmm. just to step into the fray yeah. <laughs> and uh, to be there for people. And of course, uh, you're, you're <laughs> I still haven't found a name for him. The director, <laughs> yeah. David, David, who, who God has given him this vision, and then he supplied these tremendous resources. Yeah. Now, have you all considered those things to be miracles? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, sure, yeah. but here's here's the thing: we wake up expecting miracles. Mm-hmm. That's the only way we could make it. Yeah. And yeah. so we're 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 not. Uh, when we get when the guy donates the house and the guy donates the money to do this and a million dollars for that, we figure that hey, who much is given, much is required. Yeah. We you know we okay, we need to yes, add rooms. I, knowing you as long as I had, I know that's a part of your DNA. Yeah, because I remember going down there to the Haven Arrest when you were down there, and it was around Thanksgiving, and uh, you talk about you just tell me this whole thing. You say, yeah, he says. Some of the uh, staff stuff kind of got worried, and they've gone out and bought some stuff, but they didn't really need to. No, <laughs> Remember no. you telling me that? Yeah. He says, it always just shows up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. And, and that's, uh, well, that just comes from just walking in faith. Yeah. You, you, you see, you see you know, God work. Uh, you know? Even, even, uh, even a, 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 a less than bright person, <laughs> I start saying like me because I don't want to sound <laughs> self-facing, but when, when you see something over and over and over again, Sooner or later, you're you going to see a pattern. Yeah, you know, but maybe maybe God has a plan here, and it, and then it gets to the point where it's kind of like that old joke about the boy that goes to the room and this, you know, the room's full of manure. Right, right. And right. he says, "There's got to be a pony here pony. somewhere." <laughs> you know. Well, so I know that God's doing something. Yeah. Uh, but when you're in the moment, when you're in the suffering moment, when yeah. when my wife was dying. Uh, I can look back and see all the incredible things God was doing, but in that moment, it was sad. It was painful. Right. It was griefful. So when you find people in their moment, you don't criticize them. You just come along next to them. You know, you, something right, you said has right. provoked me. I remember this a couple times recently. I was sitting at a uh, at someplace eating, and we were just having a, a dinner, and somebody just started praying in the normal prayer, and that person felt led, and they said something about praying for the people that are out there on the street right now that don't have something to eat, and I just started crying. And I had asked myself, uh, because this ministry, it almost feels like I'm cheating because I haven't had this kind of help ever. <laughs> I mean, this is just, I'm just the smallest guy on the campus. You know, I mean, I'm just a very small piece of this ministry. Uh, I just get the privilege of showing up and being there when somebody's hurting or whatever. And, uh, and I thought for a while, because I feel so burdened about the, the homelessness and prison ministries of Leon County that I was such a part of for such a long time that now I'm not even in Leon County but once every other week or so. And so I just I just kind of had that out of my mind. I kept waiting, well, is there am I done in Leon County? Am I not going to be here? And I'm so busy, so, so excited about what we're doing over there. But when that person prayed that prayer, it was like the Macedonian call. I could just, 
I know the, mm. the Walmarts. I know the, the Circle Ks. I know the, the back paths and so forth. People are right now tonight in cold weather. Mm. I know where they're at. And uh, my heart has never been removed from that. Mm. So I don't want to be, this is, for me, this is not an either or. Yeah. But uh, you haven't, haven't had that knowledge of people. I mean, is there a possibility of somewhere along the line that some of the situations that you knew of here, you'll be able to direct them? Well, I, if, I, the, first off, there are a lot of help. There's a lot of help yeah. in, uh, in this area, and I know them. So I, and my phone number has been out for so long that I, get, I still get calls from yeah. police officers or whatever. Um, and, and I can kind of help direct traffic a little bit. But that's not enough for me. Um, and and one, of my, one of the things that connected myself and David is that David promised me. He said, I know your heart. And he says, and I'll do every, you help me do this, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that the people that you help are not left behind. Mm. And, the, and the payoff to this is, all those years that we were helping them, we fed them, we, you know, we shared the gospel with them, we loved on them. But that mental health piece, I could never do anything with that. I didn't know anything oh, about yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now I have a world-class connection yeah. to some great Christian mental health people. And so I think we're building a, a, a bigger and a stronger platform and foundation. But I don't think uh, the Lord is through with us yet, as far as my part no, being no, out there. I, the see the, I see the connection. Yeah, uh, that that that's uh, the reason I'm God, doing it. Yeah, yeah. God in His wisdom, yeah. He'll bring all that together. Yeah. But but I do. I, I see the connection yeah. because this problem is it's not like it just occurred. No, it's been there all along. Yeah. It's just kind of been left un, yeah. unattended to. Yeah. And we say, well, we try to try to take care of their physical needs yeah. and, and whatever, and maybe sometimes even the the thought, well, we, we really can't help them. Yeah. Maybe maybe there's just no there's just is no help yeah. for them. And yeah, that, that that thought never occurs to me. Uh, <laughs> there is help. Yeah, uh, you just have to have the time. You just yeah. have to take the time. Yeah. to be still and and be with somebody. Sometimes it's like when my friend, when my wife was dying, and my friend flew all, went all the way over to. Uh, Jacksonville and sat with me. All he was doing was just sitting there. Oh yeah, he had no words of wisdom. Yeah, we didn't. He didn't. There's nothing he could do for me. Uh, he just sat there with yeah, me. Yeah, it's like the so. Night, so the gift of sitting there. Yeah, well, like the well, night my father died. Yeah, when when uh, I steered the church and some people were going out the door, they they heard a conference. They came back for the hour. They just sat there with me. Yeah. I, I know what you. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's a ministry. And believe it or not. We're about done here. It's time to pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Father, this has been such a valuable time. I thank you for Brother Glenn and what you've called him to do. And for, for Brother David, I look forward to meeting him. And for Beth, Father, bless this ministry, Father. And Lord, we just pray. I pray over all this radio audience, Lord. Mm -hmm. Let your hand be upon them. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray for our churches. We pray for our country. We pray for your kingdom, oh God. We pray, God, for peace in the world. Mm -hmm. And I pray for peace in the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Glenn, thanks for coming and being on the show with me. Always a pleasure. Until next Sunday morning, mm -hmm. may the Lord bless you.